Hey guys, it's day four and I started working with the tiller yesterday on Sunday and I bought it a couple of years ago and never opened it, didn't get a chance to start using it. And you see these rocks, the tiller just chunked them right out, no problem at all. Uh, still faster than trying to use a hoe or a pickaxe and break it up because I worked with the pickaxe for a little bit and um, it you're bent over and it's just slow. So for what would have taken me um, maybe 30 minutes or an hour with a pickaxe, I could do in five or 10 minutes with the tiller, including tearing off the grass that winds up on it. Um, so that was that. I was really impressed with um, it chunking out those rocks and a tip is I'm tilling with the ground very dry and all of last week it was super hot like 15 degrees above average and um, we're in the latter half of May so today is May 23rd Monday and this week we are now cooler and it's one o'clock and it's 72 degrees, but very cool. And we have a chance of rain every day this week. So waste not, want not. I am going to finish tilling this at least for the first couple of inches worth and rake out any of the large debris. So back at it with this tiller um, and I, I don't get paid for anything, but it just happened to be a Sunjo is the model that I got. And a couple years ago, it cost me, I think around $150. I have no idea what they cost now. I bought it, it was in the box and things happened and I never took it out to get started with it but it's, it's pretty easy. And um, you've seen some of the other clips or they'll be in this video. My compost bin is full now and I keep water in five gallon um, buckets. Anyway, keep watching. surprisingly I it really hasn't been that many rocks I've seen a lot more rocks in other parts of the yard so uh, I'm pretty pleased with that I'm just starting this afternoon I got busy this morning and so today is the first full day that's been dry and I have the next step in my garden to do, which is to put down cardboard. But all of this overhang uh, from these sucker trees that are growing on my fence line, all of that will be trimmed back once I'm ready to start planting. But in the meantime, while I'm preparing the ground and adding uh, my compost and things, the cardboard that I'm about to put down today, I am going to appreciate having some extra shade. And then once I'm ready, then I will cut back. I'm literally going to cut down a couple of these completely. They are kind of, they're crowding into the, the power lines that go through the alley anyway. So I need to take them down. That was a squirrel. I think squirrels are so funny because they, 
if you don't catch them, they kind of sound like a monkey or something. <laughs> but he's up there. I hope he doesn't um, shop my garden for too much food, but I am not a stingy person. I am willing to share a little bit. Just don't take too much, leave some for me. And I have all of this cardboard right here and I have more cardboard on its way. Um, my husband works for a company that they repair restaurant equipment and they sell parts for that equipment. So sometimes they have really big cardboard and I didn't have to dumpster dive to get it. So um, anyway, he was very sweet and brought it to me and he has some more coming on the way. So I'm excited for these big pieces of cardboard that's a lot less gaps. And, but if not any side of, size of cardboard, cardboard, if I can talk, any size of cardboard will do, just overlap the edges. But just wanted you to see how big some of these boxes are. So it's, it's really big. And I live in Texas, so you need some sort of bug repellent. I don't have any um, plants that do that yet. And so I will definitely bring that in. Um, my sister-in-law has some great plants and they're really big and lush and it's easy just to pinch off a piece and rub it on your arms and they leave you alone. But for now, oh, they're already coming after me. <laughs> um, so I'm gonna use this for now. And, oh, that's a good sign. I think that was a bee. We'll take it. You can come by, just don't buzz too close to my ear. I'm so far behind. This year on this season, I had been working on an estate that had to be cleaned out and remodeled. And that took me three months helping out with that. And it was very hard, very physical, but now I can get back to um, the projects that I planned and I'm not going to, to wait. So uh, next would be the cardboard. All right. For now, you see I've created a ride up against the fence because once I take this uh, foliage up here, well, I'm gonna take these two sucker trees completely down and out of here. Um, then I will get sun in here and I can utilize the fence um, to grow some things that climb. That's how it's starting to look. I'm leaving a gap here. Uh, you want about four feet for um, the wheelbarrow or getting in and out of our alley because there's a little gate right here. <laughs> But I've overlapped the edges and there's no stickers or staples. Um, so that's, that's that. And I will just keep filling it in and fill in all the areas, including any walkways because the walkways, um, I still do not want anything growing in those and I'll come up with something. I'm very, very frugal. So um, most of what I use, I didn't pay anything for like the bricks, the cardboard, um, these bins, I get them off the side of the road, you know, like on somebody's trash or whatever, they were just vegetable baskets or something, and they are great for working in my garden. I'm going to retill all of this as best I can. My goal is to get down to 10 to 12 inches. Um, so I will loosen up what I have and maybe go one more um, layer down. That would take me to five or six inches. I'm probably at three to four inches right now. And, um, and then rake that to the side and go down deeper until I get about 10 inches worth. We had a long holiday weekend. So today is May 31st and it's time to get back out here in the garden. Well, there's really nothing growing. It's all preparation. You can see the sun is out. It is very humid and cloudy. It is Tuesday and tomorrow night the rain will be back for one day. So I want to make the most of today and tomorrow before the rain comes and then I will do other planning indoors. So today, as you see, I've gotten a lot of the cardboard down. I have more cardboard that I went and picked up um, yesterday and I'm hoping for another batch of cardboard sometime this week and I think that might be all the cardboard that I need. So I roughly have about 500 square feet and um, so I've plotted that out on paper just the dimensions um, along with 
like where this 10 by 10 cage is, uh, where my walking path is for the gate, and to get in from over here. Now this orange plastic fence is just a temporary fence and I've actually had to stake a few things into the edge of the plastic fence to keep the big dogs from chasing critters at night after dark. They'll come out um, for their break and they will see something run underneath the plastic fence and they wanna go after it. Cat, I don't know, possum. We live in the city, but we do get possums. Um, and of course you have other critters, but the nighttime stuff would be, either be a cat or a possum. Um, so I still have this stack of bricks and today is the day to get the rest of these bricks over there. And I've been trying to rotate, um, like which muscle groups I'm using so that I don't tire myself out or get an injury. Um, and once you're just constantly working in your garden, that's probably less likely, um, but I went from no garden to cleaning up a neglected backyard and then prepping for a garden that's 500 square feet. It's not gigantic, but it's a pretty good sized garden for a city lot. And so we still have roughly about two thirds of the rest of the yard uh, for the family. So some of that's for the dog, some of that's for us like on a patio but all of that needs um, work as well. So it's, there'd be more projects. Um, it's really a lot of shade um, and very dry Texas heat. We've had uh, drought conditions for quite some time now. And so if you don't get back out to the back part of the yard, um, then it doesn't get watered, so. But you know, that old saying like the, the back 40 or the back 20 or whatever that was back when people had acreage and my grandparents from both sides had acreage um, either when they were young or all the way through and you know until they were old um, but no acreage now but I am not going to waste what I do have and make it functional and have have some vegetables out here so let's see what my progress is today Okay, I started tilling um, for the second round and it is a chore if this isn't something you do on a regular basis and I'm pretty fit. Um, but yes, it's an arm workout. Your hands will get tired before your arms and you can feel it like in your feet because you're resisting the pull. But um, I still want to till this to 10 to 12 inches. Um, if you have the resources to do above ground beds, um, that might be something you would prefer to do. You still have to construct the perimeters to hold in um, probably a good eight inches um, of dirt and six to eight inches, I guess. And, but, I had a snafu, so I have a temporary fence that's made out of plastic, and there are tree roots coming up. Um, so here's one tree root right there, and here's another one right here. Um, so, yeah. These are from the sucker trees. They are awful trees. The roots run, I'm sure, deep and shallow, but the roots keep popping up in my way. And so when the tiller caught the, the root and when it popped the root, the tiller jumped up and grabbed my temporary fence. So, I mean, quickly you just let go of the button and no big deal there, but I had to um, cut like through the center of the, of the, t of the temporary fence so that I could pry it off of each of the two sets of teeth. And I will have to repair that later so that the dogs don't get back here. Um, but yeah, it happens. But 
all that section is cardboarded for now until I'm ready to to do the next step over there I'm just trying to make sure stuff doesn't try to grow before I'm ready um, like weeds and whatever and the first teal that I did probably did two to three inches um, I thought maybe more possibly in some spots it might be but I'm thinking that it really only did a good loosening for two to three inches the first time I did it the other day and then now I've gone over this um, a second time and really tilted upwards um, and worked it down to get down a few more inches so I think I'm at about maybe about six inches of depth in this section and I have taken the dirt up and made piles to the left and to the right so that I can go down even deeper otherwise you just keep circulating the same loose soil and it can't really dig into the lower levels we had rain like a week ago and now that I've gotten down lower there is some coolness to the dirt which tells me that it, there's some moisture in it and um, so there is a lot of of this kind of rock and I will take out what I can but if I were to try to fish this out I'd be out here for days and weeks trying to pick up all this little stuff so um, I will get what I can and and move on but dirt wise even with the rocks mixed in right if I give it a good squeeze it does this and then it just comes back apart so that's a good first start um, I do have a test kit coming today uh, sometime so that I can check for pH which is not that significant um, but I, what I was more interested in was it also checks for other elements um, other minerals you know your uh, calcium potassium phosphate and um, so I think it allows for like 10 tests per each so that will be great and I will test it like this and then I will test it again after I add some stuff to it I don't know about you but I just like to get my hands in the dirt and just with the tiller I'm wearing gloves but um, it's just there's just something about it so hopefully my dirt is not just dirt hopefully it's a little richer than that and it will uh, be good enough to call soil so wish me luck Tilling this to, you know, 10 to 12 inches deep um, is difficult with this small tiller. So this little Sunjo, um, you have like six to eight inches of rotor under here or blade and that's not enough. So when you till through, it takes about it gets about three inches of it, three to four inches. Um, and then you're gonna have to shovel it out and do it again, shovel it out and do it again to try to get deep enough for your garden. So it took me a long time to do two feet by 15 or so feet wide. And um, when you till it enough, the volume of dirt will actually be a little bit taller than where you began and um, because now it has all this air in it because you've loosened it up uh, this house was built in 1952 so i don't know that much has been done back here in a long long time we've been here uh 20 26 years and we have not ever tilled back here um, like this so it's very compacted and hard um, but it as it tills it is loosening up uh, very nicely So this early start greenhouse I got this at an estate that I helped clean out and uh, make some repairs and this was in the uh, Shed out back brand new never opened Okay, it's June 8th and I have been working nonstop um, other than on the weekends for my family and sometimes on the weekend as well, but um, just not all day. But during the week, it's 8.30 or 9 uh, that I've been getting started out here. 
So I set this up and this it was free. Uh, the, um, the little greenhouse was free. The uh, containers, the green and the clear, I got those at the Dollar Tree for $1.25 each. And because um, I needed some functionality now rather than waiting for when I could find something uh, cheaper than $1.25. <laughs> but um, so that's, that's what I have there. And I got this cart a couple of years ago on curbside and it's working great for a little desk. And I've set the t cardboard down temporarily. Um, so there are some stickers I need to peel off um, still, but I don't want anything trying to grow up. So I wanna block out any sunshine I can. I need to put a little bit more cardboard here. And so I have one walkway path here. Hopefully today I will get this walkway to the gate um, put down. Then I have one garden bed ready out of the 11 by 11 that I tilled um, 10 to 12 inches deep. And then I'm making it about two inches raised. So I'm filling the two inches roughly of what the brick um, edge is. So I've just kind of roughly covered them because I need to add some elements to it, um, some amendments, and um, some bone meal, blood meal, um, some compost. But for now, it's tilled loose and the major rocks have been taken out, which that was a chore. <laughs> and roots, 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 um, got those out. So that's a four foot bed. This is roughly a four foot bed here. I don't have the outer perimeter um, brick border on that. Over here, I'm gonna bring a water supply over here from the faucet near the house. So I've just kind of designated, I want it to come up about roughly here. I just have a brick in the ground here all the way down in there to designate that this section has been tilled. And um, so there's a brick marker. It has not been tilled past here. And I've been adding some more green in here. I know it looks very brown, but I've mixed some up over the top to bury the green stuff that I've put in there. Some grass clippings, some vegetable uh, scraps. And this, I just have pinned my extra cardboard and I have some more cardboard coming today to pick from. Any I don't use will go out for recycle. So they come twice a week, which is really nice. Um, so I now have six garden beds and it's a total of like 280 square feet total. So I have, and um, this is west. So opposite of here will be the east. And then the back three beds, as you can see, are on the north end. And so I will grow beans and corn and things like that back here on trellises. And then the front three beds, as you can see here, and I have cardboard on a couple of them so things don't start sprouting up. I just finished this third last bed these two beds are four by 11 and the other is seven by 11. So 77 square feet at the end. And so I have these six beds and you can see I have some walkways, all the bricks I got free. Um, I just put a thing on the next door neighborhood app and told people that I would come pick up their bricks and most of the bricks around these beds have cement um, inside the holes because it was already constructed into something at some point. And, uh, but it's, I think it'll work great because it's gonna contain a lot of my rain and watering that I do. So it doesn't just run out too quickly into my walkways and on the tips of them because my yard slightly slopes from the north um, to the south. So on the tips of, of the beds, I put bricks that have holes in them so that drainage can run forward to the front. Um, I went to the feed store and there wasn't a lot of options for me. They were sold out of a lot of stuff. So for now, for my walkways, I got this compressed bale of Timothy grass 
and um, I'm gonna spread that in my little walkways and um, hopefully have something clean and then I can um, compost it when it degrades too much and I need to replace it and that's what I've got going on.